This is the second logo design lecture that discusses the qualities of an effective mark for the ART 161 graphic design course. So in our last lecture, we talked about different types of logos and how to begin your project based on some of the research that you're collecting and some of the ideas that you are trying to use to represent what your company or your brand is about. So what makes an effective logo? We talked about some logos that have worked very well in the past and are very iconic. So to understand what a logo is, we really need to understand what the main purpose of a logo is. And the design process must aim to make the logo immediately recognizable. You wanna to try to inspire trust and admiration, potentially loyalty, or even some sort of implied superiority. The logo is one aspect of a company's commercial brand or economic entity though. It is not what makes the company. It is just really a small part of the overall company's branding efforts. But the shapes and the colors and the fonts or typefaces or images usually are strikingly different from other logos in the same market niche to create some sort of visual separation from those other brands that are also within the same market. So take, for example, Pepsi and Coca-Cola, right? They're very similar drinks, but they have very different logos and they are trying to represent that company in different ways. And we can see this in all different aspects of design and marketing. Paul Rand is one of the great designers of our time. And he is responsible for many of the logos that we still use today. And he's considered one of the world's greatest designers. And what he has to say is, a logo is a flag, a signature, an echelon, a street sign. A logo does not sell directly. It identifies. A logo is rarely a description of a business. A logo derives meaning from the quality of the thing it symbolizes, not the other way around. A logo is less important than the product it signifies. What it represents is more important than what it looks like. So the subject matter of the logo can be almost anything. And I think this is really important to consider because oftentimes as beginning designers, we tend to think about what the company is and how we can directly portray that within the logo. And sometimes that can be effective, but oftentimes we can think about going back to the uh, graphic translation project that we have worked on in the past and this use of simplification, abstraction, and stylization. A good logo is generally going to be distinctive. It's going to be appropriate, practical. It's going to be graphic, and it's going to be simple in its form. It conveys the owner's intended message. It conveys a concept or meaning that is usually behind an effective logo, and it communicates that intended message. So there are five principles of effective logo design that we're going to look at today. The first one being that it is simple. The second is that it is memorable. The third is that it is timeless. The fourth is that it is versatile. And the fifth is that it is appropriate to the brand. So when we think about a logo, we want to think about the simplicity that makes a logo design easily recognizable, that makes it versatile, and that makes it memorable. You know, most good logos feature something that is unexpected or unique without being overdrawn. So the logo over here on the right is what we are currently used to being represented by Apple computers. But that wasn't always the case. The image on the left here was the original logo for the Apple computer company. And as you can see, it's wildly different from the one that we use today. The one that we use today is incredibly simple compared to the one on the left. Imagine showing the logo on the left at a very, very small size, right? It would be very hard to decipher what's going on within the imagery here, where the logo on the right can really be scaled up and scaled down and still have that recognition and that versatility among the brand. Now, <clears throat> in both of these cases, though, they're not showing a computer in the actual logo, right? They're tying in what this branding or this concept of the company is about. And that's about new ideas. So if you've ever wondered where the kind of Apple icon comes from, 
it goes back to this idea of ideas and Newton sitting underneath this tree where we have this apple that has fallen on his head to kind of represent this idea. So it's not necessarily showing a computer in the space. It's representing this larger idea of what this company is all about, which is creating new and inventive prod products that uh, we use today. So the design of the mark hits the appropriate understanding level of the intended target audience. So think about highly abstract marks that are costly to promote. The mark should be quickly and easily readable within the space. Following closely on this principle of simplicity is that idea of memorability. An effective logo design should be memorable, which is achieved by keeping it simple yet appropriate. An effective logo should also be timeless. You can ask yourself as you begin to work on your logo, will this stand the test of time? Will it still be effective in 10, 20, or 50 years? As you saw in the previous slide, the, app, the original Apple logo did not quite have that timeless look and feel. It had a very much heritage or um, vintage kind of look and feel to it. And they had to change that to adapt to the new strategies of the brand and the company. Another really important aspect of logo design is versatility. You want a logo that is gonna work across a variety of media and applications. So ask yourself, is your logo still effective? It is, if it is printed small or large, is it if it's printed in one single color, if it's printed in reverse color, meaning a light logo on a dark background, if it's printed as small as a postage stamp or as large as the side of a building or a billboard, how can you create that simplicity that is going to be versatile within various sizes needed for this logo? And it's also important to go back to those basic principles of design, thinking about positive and negative space, thinking about unity, thinking about space itself. And when we think about white space, we want to think about how this can flow and not become trapped within the logo. Over on the left here, we can see that when the heart is positioned inside a square, we feel like it's kind of trapped within the space there. But when we look at the option to the right, we can see that by putting those lines that create this eye movement that flows through the mark, it's really creating much more of a positive and negative relationship being used within the space. And we can see that being used within the Starbucks logo or even the USA network. It's also important to think about that figure ground phenomenon to design effective logos. This is sometimes a really useful tool within design to create negative or white space that can be considered carefully to give the mark additional meaning. So on the left, we have the logo for the company Handy, and you can see that they have these two hands in different positions. And within the negative space of the index finger and the thumb, we start to see this H that's being represented. Over on the right, we have this really clever logo for a golf club called Spartan Golf Club. And they're really using uh, positive and negative space brilliantly here, where the first thing that you may see is either a golfer swinging its club, or you may see a Spartan face with a sort of helmet on top. And they're able to achieve that through this relationship of the positive and negative or figure ground space. Now, you wanna also think about what is appropriate for your intended art audience, or what is the position that your logo should have within the competitive nature of other companies that are in that same business. So for example, you might use a childlike font or color scheme that would be appropriate for a logo for a children's toy store, right? Not so much for a law firm. If we used these sort of bubbly, very colorful letters for a law firm, it probably wouldn't be as effective for that particular business. So you wanna think about who your intended audience is and what's going to be some appropriate measures to take on your mark that is going to best appeal to that intended audience. Now designing a logo can be a long and challenging process, but it's also a valuable learning experience. It's by taking the time to really go back and define your brand identity, overcome perfectionism, and try to develop your design skills and communicate effectively with clients. This is how you can create a logo that accurately represents your brand and communicates its values to your audience. 
So please continue to work on this project and reach out if you have any questions.